reason you have an observer effect is the reality, this virtual reality, only exists in the minds of the players. Okay, only exists in the minds of the players. Now, I know that's when you play it to yourself, it's like that's just too far out. But think of the world of Warcraft. Okay, where is that world of Warcraft? Where are those monsters? Where are those rivers and rocks and streams and buildings and all of that stuff that makes up the world of Warcraft map? Where is that? Servers. It's only the servers send out data. That reality is only in the minds of the players. What the server sends out is data streams. What the server sends to you isn't a river and a stream and a rock. It sends to you two million pixels. Each pixel has three components. It's got a position, it's got an intensity, it's got a color. That's it. So you get two million intensities, positions, and colors, dots. That's what the, that's what the system sends to you. You look at those two million dots and you turn that into rivers and streams and rocks and buildings with doors and doorknobs that have to be turned. You interpret that data to be that reality. It's the same way it is here. Consciousness gets a data stream. The, da the individual conscious interprets that data stream to be this reality. So the world of Warcraft with its rivers and streams and doors and doorknobs only exists in the minds of the players. The computer doesn't compute a doorknob. The computer computes dots of light with a position, an intensity, and a color. That's all it computes. And it computes how to arrange them on the screen. You interpret it as rivers from your interpretation. So the, because the reality only exists in the minds of the players, if the reality, if the data is never put into the mind of a player, it can't be in the virtual reality. See, there's nothing that can be in the world of Warcraft that doesn't come to you, go on your screen as dots. If the, if the dots aren't there, then whatever they would represent isn't there either. You see? But I'm so, about the explanation yeah. between the way they react when they're observed and the way they react. Right. When they're not. So, the difference is, you see, when you send, let's say, in a double slit experiment, an observer is an important part of that experiment. Okay? The important thing here isn't the observer or the observer's consciousness so much. I mean, both of those are important, but it's the information. It's about information. So if the information comes to an observer or is available for an observer to look at that the particle went through slit A or slit B in a double slit experiment, then that, because it came to an observer, that now is a fact that is part of the physical, physical, the virtual reality that seems physical to us, right? It becomes a fact here. If there is no observer, if there's no, that a data never came to anybody, in other words, there was never any pixel lit up on a screen, it's not part of the reality. So that's why it changes it. When there's an observer, that means that information has come into this reality that an observer or any observer can look at. So the double slit experiment, you have which way data? Which way did the particle, you know, which slit did the particle go through? It's got two choices. Which way did it go? Well, once you have that information here in this reality, then the result is going to be no diffraction pattern. It's going to be just light or particles to pile up behind the slits because there's no information here to, to determine otherwise because nobody got that, that data is, doesn't exist. But once that data is here, it's a fact. And the only way it gets to be a fact here is if it comes to a consciousness logged into this game and now it's part of a fact of the virtual reality. So that's why you have the observer effect. In a, in a uh, virtual reality, that observer is a key part of what shows up in the reality because all the reality exists only in the minds of the players. You see, it does, there is no objective reality. It's only in the minds of the player. The player is the conscious, and the player is the observer. If the observer doesn't get any data, then that can't possibly exist in the virtual reality. So that's why the observer is important in quantum mechanics. And it's not really that a consciousness has to look at it, it's that there's information, either it's in the reality or it's not. And the only way I can get into the reality is through an individuated unit of consciousness getting that information. So that's the observer, you see? That's how, that's how that works. 
So that's one of my experiments. I told you I had a bunch of experiments. That's one of the experiments I have, is that you set up a double slit experiment, and you have detectors detecting which way data at each slit, and then you just turn off the detectors. I mean, you turn off, you know, you turn off the recorder. They're recording the detections. Let the detectors detect. Just turn off the recorder that's recording the detections. So now you've eliminated the information. When you eliminate the information, no IUOC, no consciousness gets any information because there is no information to get. It's not being created. Therefore, it makes a difference. So I'm, that's one of my experiments is you just turn off the recorder and watch the particles redistribute themselves. It has nothing to do with the detectors at all. Which right now, scientists would say, oh no, it's the detector. It's that connection with the detector that makes that difference. There's an entanglement with the detector. And virtual reality says, you don't need that. That's, that's complexity that is unnecessary. It's a simpler system to do it the other way. Not that it couldn't be done that way. It's just that it would not be parsimonious, I believe, to do it that way. So it would be simpler to, to not.